is still very present in the mere culture. And culture is defined as that knowledge, the custom, the values that have been passed down from one generation to the next generation to the next generation. And as a result of that, it becomes systemic to the point that people have these ill feelings and untruths and that they act on them. Dr. Gordon Allport would always talk about in the nature of prejudice, acts on prejudice, and how this whole notion that people think in very negative ways about others because of perceptions or misperceptions of others, but they act in very negative ways toward them. You so, know, I, yeah. I heard it said uh, quite recently that uh, the election of, Dr., uh, of, of uh, President Obama might have meant that a uh, non-racial kind of society mm, mm -hmm. will be issued in. Now speak mm -hmm. to that, I mean, yeah. the, 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 well, that's I a, think that, that that's, and, and what you're saying here is yes. that as long as we have memory, yes. we're gonna have a problem yes. of race in America because we yeah. can never forget slavery, we can never, never forget segregation, we can mm -hmm. never forget any of those things, and so, yeah. well, I mean, speak but to yeah, that. Yeah, very good, because that is referred to as a post-racial society, mm -hmm. and we have a number of people, unfortunately, men of the millennials, mm -hmm. who have lived and benefited from the struggles of that earlier time period, now feel that, oh, racism has been eradicated that we live in a post-racial society, that if you just do X, Y, and Z, then you can be successful. And they are really misinformed and, and misdirected to think that everything has indeed been eradicated. That's why when we look at this particular election of Trump, we can see how a vast majority of people have certain thoughts out there that are very racially intended, and how a particular person that way could make certain comments and everyone else could cheer in favorable toward them. Because this notion of a, a post-racial or post-racism is, is, is just untrue. It's, so there, so over this last half yes. minute that we have here, there can never be a post racial society as long as we have memory mm -hmm. in America of what race is and what race was. Th that's because absolutely correct. will always come back yes. no matter what the, the movements might be. I think you've indicated mm -hmm. that uh, uh, the election of President mm -hmm. Obama meant that we might have reached that point, mm -hmm. but still we get another person with the, the memory of uh, Mr. Trump, yes. for example, will bring that back more than ever. Absolutely. Is that, is that what we're That's saying? That's absolutely what we are saying. Very good. And, 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 and so, so what we'll do, we'll take this uh, second commercial break, okay. and then we'll give you an opportunity to expand on okay. uh, this idea. And okay. we'll be back with our audience following this very, very short commercial break. It can be. In other words, yeah. there, there should be a period where race will yeah. be forgotten. That's right. You see, and, yeah. and you can't forget race as yeah. long as you can remember, if you remember the history, That's right. then race is always present. That's right, absolutely. Yeah, even if, and then the sad part, even if you don't, yeah. but with that operating out there in that way, people uh -huh. like the guy in South Carolina, that's what's kind of, that's what's kind of disturbing. He's so young, uh -huh. but had that in his mind uh -huh. to go in there and kill, kill people. All, yeah. And even in his defense said, I'm not sorry, that that's how I think, think and feel. Uh -huh. Now, he wasn't born that way. Mm -hmm. So what was going on within his that's environment right. uh -huh. from birth to uh -huh. that young age of 20, 21 that's right. that would make him go in there and do that? It must have been something very hateful. Uh, but you it. just, uh, and you walk in there and people are loving, giving, praying with you, and then you pull out a gun and shoot them. Or the fellow that w walked through uh, the airport in, yes. in uh, oh, yeah. Florida. In Florida, and, and, same and thing. Yes, yes, start shooting. <coughs> Took out a gun yes, and just right. started shooting. That's right. <coughs> Thank you and welcome back to the se final segment of the show for today. We're talking to Dr. E. Kelly Sanford from Tennessee State University, and the uh, topic is the impact of systemic racism and inequality in America. 
And so, Doctor, let's pick up where we left off and yeah. use the last few minutes that we have of this show to sort of expand and to educate our audience in reference to some of the issues that we're dealing with here. Okay. Yes, and you brought up in the last segment that whole notion of memory, and I think that memory is very much defined in the systemic aspect. It's so ingrained in the very fabric or culture in which we live in not only for African Americans and other people of color, but for women as well. Mm -hmm. That ceiling still hasn't been broken. Mm -hmm. But I also want to try to share some invisible aspects of that systemic or in that memory. Mm -hmm. In many instances, and we may not think, ever think about it, but there are so many institutions that are still present within our society because of the history has left people out. And if we would do a cursory look, and I challenge people to go in and Google and kind of pull up different orchestras throughout the United States and take a glimpse at the pictures there and see if you see an African American string players within those orchestras. And if you did that, you would probably end up saying, well, maybe I saw one or two, but that would be it. And you would think about looking at slavery, if you think about roots and, mm -hmm. and, um, and, and Fittler in the roots, that you knew people could then indeed play. But there mm -hmm. was something ingrained in the society that indicated that people, even if they had an interest mm -hmm. in wanting to play a string instrument, by law they could not. Mm -hmm. And even if they got well enough to play, there was something systemic in the, in the institution of fairness that was inequality that said you could not be a part of the orchestra. Mm -hmm. And um, there are plenty of people, if you look at the literature, but one person by the name of Eddie South, whether people are familiar with this person, Heifetz mm -hmm. was considered one of the greatest violinists in the country. And he went to New Orleans because he heard about this person that he had to perform that night by the name of Eddie South. Mm -hmm. And he went and played the piece that he was going to perform as a solo, Heifetz did, with Eddie South and note for note, Eddie South was able to play. He said, my goodness, you should be able to play anywhere in the world. But because of the pigmentation of his skin, the, the, the systemic nature of racism and inequality, he was not able to be a part of an orchestra. Today, whatever the date is, 2017, and if you do a cursory look at those pictures, you will find the same issue right now that you would have found then. And why? primarily because it was not a part of the culture to be fair, to allow people to explore, to allow people to have interest. It took that from people, just whatever is human natural, human nature to be able to do that. Because we know of the great Duke Ellington and Count Basie and John Coltrane and everyone else who could flourish could. So it was nothing different in that instrument than another one. But there was something in the very fabric that prevented that. So. When we think about all we've been talking about today, systemic racism and the impact of inequality, there's still a need for people to recognize that that occurred so that you would have something quite similar to an affirmative action plan that would say, let's seek out, let's look for people who have the qualifications, that have the fortitude, and you might have to do something a little different to then bring those people in to these symphonies. Finally, <clears throat> Dr. Sandberg, would you say that the efforts to create African study departments mm. and various kinds of uh, uh, inclusive mm -hmm. kinds of organizations on college campuses is an attempt to try to reach at this memory mm -hmm. and really change this memory at an early age. In other mm -hmm. words, even uh, elementary school children mm -hmm. who have an opportunity to live and work toward with one another different races, different religions, and et cetera, that is an effort and a method whereby this system, a systemic racism and inequality might be dealt with, even though we might never erase it because of memory, mm -hmm. but we might be able to deal with it much more effectively than we're doing. Ab that's absolutely. Mm -hmm. and, um, and I've been in the charge of doing that now for really all of my educational career mm -hmm. in diversity in education mm -hmm. and education and having a curriculum that is more diverse, mm -hmm. even in kindergarten, leading through high school and then at institutions of higher education. Mm -hmm. And as a person that was a former director of Africana Studies in all places at the University of Montana, mm -hmm. 
I would have a class that had 280 to 310, and the vast majority were European American. It is very important to be able to talk about the true history mm -hmm. in its context. And what that does, it eradicates to a certain degree the nature of prejudice. It, reduces the fear that people might have. It increases the knowledge and as you become more familiar, Dr. Orton, Gordon Allport would say, with a particular group, then you become more comfortable with allowing you to be open and fair to that group. So back to your point, I think Yes, it's very important to have this within all of the educational system to try to help people to have a better understanding of different ethnic groups and diversity and, and not only for different ethnic groups but also for women, also for gay brothers, lesbian, um, 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 groups of people in our society so that we can have laws that would change, opportunities that will increase and that would help people a lot. The yes. only way we can end racism or sexism in America is through diversity. That yeah, is absolutely. bringing different races, <coughs> sexes, and everything else together and having them to understand and to know more about one another. We can then start dealing with this systemic That's aspect right. of it. Is that what we're saying? That's exactly <coughs> what we are saying. From the curriculum to then the, in, to the integration or the segregation of, of programs to the inclusion. But I would like to say, social, psychologically and sociologically, that it has to be recognized. Mm -hmm. if, if that issue or concern is not recognized as a reoccurring pattern, then you will not have an individual in there to then want to do it. So I think this education will certainly assist in that effort. Mm -hmm. But if you don't see it, then you can always just continue in the same way that it has always been done. Mm -hmm. And people will kind of applaud that. And um, we have to see that as a positive, to be able to be inclusive versus exclusive of groups of people being a part of. And I'm hoping that, but I become a little discouraged that we have taken steps back more so than usual mm -hmm. with this new um, election that is coming up, mm -hmm. um, and that it just seemed like it's, it's a <coughs> step backwards step versus backwards, in, uh, a forward. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, and, and it's sad. <coughs> you know, uh, Dr. Sanford, I think over the last couple of minutes that we have yes. here, uh, if we think in terms of solutions, yes. we can say that a separate institution, whether that be an educational institution or whatever kind of institution, whatever kind of race, might, uh, these are things that are against this idea of bringing about a better understanding of uh, various, uh, various individuals within uh, our society. Absolutely, because I think one of the strong thrusts that has been worked on for over these years, even with the Supreme Court justice, has been inclusion mm -hmm. with diversity. It has come before the Supreme Court a number of times, and each time with Sandra Day O'Connor's, mm -hmm. as well as recently with support of diversity, mm -hmm. not only at institutions of higher education, but also in the workforce. Mm -hmm. They see the strength not the it being negative that you are being inclusive, that you are having different groups represented. Mm -hmm. uh, and that that's should be looked at as being positive versus being negative. And I hope that we can continue to work in that vein and understand that because there's still a lot of work to do at the higher echelons of, of, of employment mm -hmm. as far as education.